Welcome to the Reading Corner. My name is TJ. I'll be reading for you today, The Poor Man's Reward. Long ago, on the wide plains of Africa, there lived a young man who was poor and all alone. For his parents had died, and he owned nothing but the clothes on his back. One day, the poor man decided he would set off it didn't matter where, to see if he'd have better luck in another part of the country. He packed a small amount of meat and milled it in a bag, and he filled a small gourd with honey and a large gourd with water. Very early, he set off toward the rising sun. He walked for miles across the dusty plain, and by the middle of the day, he was hot and tired. As the sun climbed higher in the sky, the sweat rolled down his face, and he wondered if he ought to give up. Luckily, there was a tree nearby, so he sat under it and rested in the shade. Feeling hungry, he opened his bag, and took out some of the millet wrapped in a cloth. Just then, he heard a voice above him. I'm starving. Could I have some of your millet? He looked up, and there was a weaver bird perched on a branch. It looked thin and worn out. Amazed that the bird could talk, the man replied, Of course! Take as much as you want. And he held out the millet so that the bird could peck at the grain. The weaver bird ate its fill, and then it chirped and spread its wings. As it flew away, it cried, Thank you, my friend. I won't forget your kindness. The man ate the rest of the millet and went on his way. He walked until dark, and then he climbed into a tree to sleep. The next day, he walked until midday, and then once more he sat down in the shade of a tree to shelter himself from the burning sun. This time, he thought he would eat the meat, but just as he was pulling it out of his bag, he heard something scratching the ground behind him. He looked around, and there was a scrawny-looking hyena eyeing the meat. Excuse me, it said, but do you think you could spare the bones when you finish the meat? You see, I haven't eaten for two days. The man couldn't believe his eyes. Here was a hyena standing right beside him and talking politely. Certainly, the man said. I'll just take a bite or two and you can have the rest. He took a bite and then gave the bone, still heavy with meat, to the hyena. The hyena chewed the meat in a few gulps and then it settled down to gnaw the bone. The man stood up to go. Oh, I beg your pardon, said the hyena. I was enjoying my meal so much that I nearly forgot to thank you. But I won't forget your kindness. The man walked along, his feet sore and his face burning from the heat of the sun. In the evening, he found a tree to sleep in, and the next morning, he started off early, with only the gourds of honey and water left. At noon, his legs were aching, and he sat down to rest by some bushes. He took the small gourd filled with honey, dipped his fingers in, and scooped some out. He was just about to help himself to more 
when he heard something buzzing around his head. A tiny voice said, I'd love some of that. There are no flowers for miles around. It was a bee. This time, the man wasn't surprised to hear an animal talking. He felt sorry for the hungry creature and immediately held out the gourd so that it could help itself. The bee ate its fill, and in a moment, it was buzzing in joyful circles around the man's head. As it flew away, it said, Thank you, sir. I won't forget your kindness. Later that afternoon, the man felt dry and dusty, so he stopped to have a drink. Just as he lifted the gourd to his lips, he heard a deep voice coming from the grass behind him. Water, just a sip, so thirsty, so thirsty. The man turned around and jumped back when he saw a large mud cake crocodile, its tongue hanging out between its long, sharp teeth. Help! Lost my way. I need drink. No. Open wide, said the man. I'll give you a drink. He poured most of the water into the huge mouth. The crocodile gulped noisily. Dungs, it rasped. Won't forget your kindness. Then it slowly crawled away. As the man walked along, he saw a man standing on the side of a hill. So he climbed up to talk to him. Good day to you, said the stranger. Have you come to try to win the hand of the princess? The poor man was puzzled. The princess? He asked, what princess? Why, said the stranger, she is the daughter of the king, of course. He is a very rich king, and his palace is just on the other side of this hill. And today, the man who picked the princess out of a crowd of people would have her for his bride. That doesn't sound very difficult, replied the man. Oh, but it's not as easy as it sounds, said the stranger, for the princess have lived in a faraway city all of her life. No one has ever seen her, so no one knows what she looks like. The man thanked the stranger and climbed to the top of the hill. From there, he saw a large village and a magnificent palace. The man hurried down the hill. The village was packed with people. How could he ever move around and see all the young girls? What would a princess look like anyway? And he thought, looking down at his dusty, shabby clothes, even if he could pick her out, she wouldn't want him. The young man felt hot and bothered, and there was an insect buzzing around his head that he couldn't get rid of. Suddenly, he heard a familiar voice. Don't worry, it piped. It's only me. The bee you helped a few days ago. Now it's my turn to help you. Watch me. I'll fly to a girl and buzz around her. She'll throw her arms in the air to brush me away. Go and take her to the king. She is the princess. 
Before the man had time to thank the bee, it flew into the crowd. In a moment, he saw a girl frantically waving her arms about. The man saw that she was very beautiful. He hesitated, and then he went up to her and said, You are the king's daughter. The girl nodded, and the word went through the crowd. Then the king came up, but when he saw how poor the man was, he said, Yes, you have chosen my daughter, but there are many tasks you must complete before you can marry her. There is a heap of mixed seeds in the courtyard. By morning, you must separate the millet and the maize into separate piles. The man saw that the hill of seeds filled nearly half the courtyard. He sighed and shook his head. How could he possibly do it in just one night? Just then, a small bird alighted on his shoulder. Hello, friend, it said. Can I be of any help? The man was delighted to see the weaver bird again. He told the bird about the task the king had given him. The bird chirped. I'll be back in a minute. Don't go away. The man wondered what the little bird was up to. Then he saw what looked like a gray cloud above the palace roof, moving toward him. It was hundreds of weaver birds all heading for the courtyard. They dived into the piles and picked up the seeds one by one in their beaks. We're good at this sort of thing, said the weaver board. And by morning, they had separated the seeds into two big piles. As they flew off over the palace roof, the man shouted, Thank you! When the king saw the seeds separated into two neat piles, he muttered, Indeed, yes. Yes, well, you have completed the first task, but there will be another one this evening. When the man went to the palace in the evening, the king told him to sit at a table. Then four servants came into the kitchen, carrying a platter with an entire roasted bowl. When the servants put the platter down, the table groaned under its weight. The king sneered and said, You must eat all the meat of this cooked bull by morning, right down to the bones. The man chewed a few mouthfuls, and because he was hungry, he thought it would be easy enough to eat all the meat but soon he felt stuffed and he couldn't face another bite though there was still a mountain of meat before him all of a sudden he saw the bright eyes of an animal creeping toward him he looked around for a place to hide but then he heard a familiar voice. <laughs> Don't be frightened, kind sir. It's only me, the hyena you fed out on the plains. What are you doing here? As the man explained his impossible task, a big smile spread across the face of the hyena. Allow me to fetch my family, said the hyena. We will have no trouble dealing with this little problem of yours. The hyena returned in a few minutes with his hungry family 
and they wasted no time in digging in and tearing off every bit of meat. The next morning, the king was astonished to see a pile of bones where the bull had been. And the platter licked clean. You have completed the second task, he growled. But this afternoon, you shall face the final task. The king was sure that the man could not succeed with this last task. In the marketplace, the king announced to all the people, To win my daughter's hand, this man must cross the river in broad daylight and bring back the magical ostrich feather from the other side of the river. At once, the crowd felt silent. When the young man looked across the river, he saw why. In the water, he saw the bulging eyes and lashing tails of hundreds of hungry crocodiles. The man could not move. If he went forward, he would certainly be killed. If he went backward, he would lose the king's daughter, who stood farther up the bank, gazing at him with admiring eyes. A deep voice interrupted his thoughts. Down here, at your feet, got a problem? There was a crocodile he had held, looking much happier than before. The man explained his task. No problem, said the crocodile. Kind man, you'll see. Then with a swish of his tail, it disappeared underwater. The man stared as the crocodiles formed a straight line across the river, each crocodile holding the tail of the one in front. Step across, said the man's friend. Bridge of crocodiles. As the man stepped onto the crocodile's back, the crowd started to clap and shout. He walked faster and faster over the living bridge until he reached the other side. He picked up the ostrich feather and hurried back across the bridge of crocodiles. When he stepped off, he thanked his crocodile friend. Any time, said the crocodile and it sank back under the water. The people crowded around the young man and clapped and cheered as he made his way to the king and his daughter. The king said, You may be dressed in rags, but you have a noble heart. Welcome to my family. The princess smiled, and the poor man knew that his lonely days were gone forever. The end.